Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the simple series of my Z80 assembly tutorials. This time we're going to be going back to the Amstrad CPC. Now, in a previous lesson, we got a little smiley face onto the screen, at effectively an 8x8 sprite. This time we're going to extend that example, and we're going to add joystick control so we can move that sprite around the screen. Now, of course, the intention of this is that what I'm giving you here is hopefully something that you can take and make into a little game of your own, you know, you could add an extra player and turn it into a Pong game or have some kind of shooting game. Anyway, it, it should be enough for you to get started making a little game of your own. And this should be a nice minimal example to get graphics onto the screen and then give the user a way of controlling those graphics. So let's take a look at the example and see it in action. We're going to be working on WinApe again today. So I'm just going to add a color to the border here just so we can see the code working. And then if I compile my code just by pressing F9, as always, you can get today's example from my website. You can just download the source code. And then if we do call 1200, and here's the example running. So we've got this little smiley icon down the bottom here. And if I um, use the joystick keys there, it's a joystick, but it's mapped to my keyboard here. You can see we can move up, down, left, and right. And if I hold down or hold right or hold left, we can't go off the screen. So we're limited to the visible area of the screen, which I say is what you would probably want for an early game. Now, because I've not cleared the background, you can see here we're kind of erasing bits of the background as we go, but you know, that's um, it's not really a problem for this case. So we're gonna learn how to do this today. And as I say, the idea is you would then extend this further, adding a second player or whatever else you wanted. But what we're looking at today should be enough to get you started. And this should be about as minimal as you can get for this kind of functionality. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Now, the code itself is based on the previous sprite routine. We've got the code for the sprite drawing just here, and it's basically unchanged. The only difference is now um, I've turned it into a subroutine, and I've added the two versions, one which uses the test sprite, which you can see just here, and it's a smiley face, and one of which uses what's known as the blank sprite, which erases the smiley face and resets the background here. So that's just a set of zeros to clear out the smiley face. So that's down there. We've got a pause routine, and then all of this up here is what we're going to be looking at today. This is the new code, or at least most of it is. Now, the only other thing we need to see is we've got two words here, which are variables. We've got an X and a Y position for our player, each of which is two bytes, because that's the fo format of the function for the Amstrad CPC memory positions. So we're using the CPC firmware again for simplicity. And then we've got a backup copy, player x2, and player y2 here. And these are so that we can remember the last position of the player. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, if the player moves, we need to erase the old position the player was in. And secondly, if the player goes out of bounds, we want to bounce them back to the, a valid position on the screen. So we're using it for both those purposes in this case. Now, when our program starts here, we are just skipping over the first part of the code here. The reason for this is simple. We're only going to draw the player again if the player's actually moved. But the first time the game starts, the um, player hasn't moved, of course, and we need to show the player the starting position. So we're skipping over the joystick reading routine and we're effectively starting the main routine with a joystick value of zero, meaning no keys are pressed, but we're actually pretending they are so that we get the player drawn to the screen. So we're just skipping over this bit here and jumping down to the drawing start here. Now this is our joystick reading routine, BB24 in the firmware. It returns the accumulator with the bits up, down, left, right and fire here and the top three bits unused. Now these will be one when the button is down or zero when the button is up. But up being not pressed, sorry. So if someone presses the down button, then the down bit will go to one and so on. So if there's no buttons down, if down, left, right, and fire aren't pressed, then we just jump into this infinite loop here, just waiting for something to be pressed. If something has been pressed, we continue to here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're backing up the accumulator because we don't want to look at the joystick just yet. We're then taking the current X, Y position and we're backing them up into X2 and Y2 for later. And then we're calling the blank player function here, which as you saw before, will draw the blank sprite over the current position of the player because we're assuming the player is going to move. Now, if the player, players press fire, then they aren't moving. But for simplicity, we're just assuming any joystick operation means that the player needs redrawing. Okay, 
Now we've cleared away the player, we're now going to relocate the player depending on the joystick buttons. Remember the joystick buttons are in the accumulator because of this push pop here. We're going to test each of the bits. First we're testing the up bit and seeing if it's a 1. If it's a 0 we skip over the next line. Now the next line is incrementing HL. Now the Y coordinate starts at the bottom of the screen. So incrementing the Y value will actually move the player up the screen and that's what we're doing when the up button is pressed on the joystick. So that would move the player up. Then we check the down button. If the player is moving down we decrement HL here. If the player is moving left we decrement the X axis here and if the player is moving right we increment it here. And each time we skip over the incremental decrement command if the bit is zero. Now of course, at this point, we could do range testing and see before we increment or decrement the X position, see if the X position is actually going to go over the ranges. But for simplicity, I'm not doing that here. I'm actually doing it later on. And we'll see that in just a moment. So here we're now updating the X and Y position with the DE here. And now this is our range check. So here we're checking if there's any problems with the player's position. So what are the problems that we could have? Well, the first one would be the player has gone off the right hand side of the screen. Now, the screen is 320 pixels wide. So we're subtracting four here and we're using that to calculate the current position. So we're just checking if the player has gone off the right hand side of the screen. If the player hasn't gone off the right hand side of the screen, and that would be the case if the top byte is one or the bottom byte is 64 minus 4 and the reason we're doing it in two parts here is because of course it's a word that we need to compare so we need to check both parts of that. Um, if the player's position is okay we jump down to here. If the player's position is not okay then we're going to run this reset function which will move the player back to the last okay position that they were in. Now we're only checking if they've gone over the top boundary of 320 pixels of width of the screen. We're not checking if they go below zero. The reason for that is if you go below zero in a word, it will actually loop round to 65535, FFFF. So when we do this comparison, it would actually be over the range, even if it went under zero, if that makes sense. Now, when we do the Y position check, we're doing two checks. We need to make sure the player doesn't go below line eight, because that would actually have them going off the bottom of the screen partially. And we also need to check if they've gone above line 200, the top of the screen. Remember, it starts from the bottom. So we're doing two checks there. But either way, we either end up at player Y OK here, where we draw the player, wait a moment, and then loop back again. Or we go to player reset, where we restore the backup copy of the player's position and reset the position. So we're resetting the X and Y position if they've gone over either boundary. And that will have an effect that if we try and move diagonally, when we're at the edge of the screen, it won't move. You see, I'm now holding the down and right keys here, but I'm completely stationary. And that's because I'm failing the right hand side screen check and the down button isn't applying at all. Now you could improve the code and allow the two checks to be applied separately. But as I say, I just wanted to give a very simple example here. I wanted to try and make it as crude as possible. So you had something that was perfectly good enough to work with that wasn't m more long than it needed to be for that purpose. So there we go anyway. Um, this is a fairly simple example here. Of course, you're welcome to download it. And if it's any help to you, go ahead and use it. I hope you found this interesting. We'll be doing the same example on a lot of other systems. So if you like this kind of thing, please like and subscribe. You know, maybe you'll come across another system that's of interest to you. Thanks for watching today anyway, and goodbye.